but our guest has got important info on the economy. What would Ebola affect the economy like uh, as well? And we're joined by uh, Harry Dent, author of The Demographic Cliff, and editor of the free newsletter Economy and Markets. He's the founder of Vent Research and was formerly uh, a top uh, analyst at Bain Capital and ran a lot of major operations there. He's had a bunch of best-selling books. Uh, his first a big bestseller uh, was The Great Boom Ahead, published in 92, which folks thought was crazy. Uh, he accurately forecasted the uh, un unanticipated boom of the 90s and the continued expansion in 2007. Then he predicted the 2008 collapse. Uh, and uh, HarryDent.com is his website. If you go to HarryDent.com forward slash Alex Jones, he did something nice publishing some of his book that's been unpublished online just for our listeners. HarryDent.com forward slash Alex Jones. He always sends us great graphs and documents to put on screen for TV viewers. So I'd encourage radio listeners to go to InfoWars.com forward slash show to actually watch the feed. Uh, or later, you can always go to PrisonPlanet.tv as a subscriber and see the TV version simulcast of this transmission. Uh, sorry to get you on late here today. We have medical doctors confirming to us uh, that they're covering up what they believe to be Ebola and whisking him away. I, how would, in your view as an economist and an analyst, uh, how would this affect things if they do cover up Ebola and there's even a moderate epidemic, a few thousand people that get it? Uh, I mean, looks to me like that would cause some major shockwaves in the economy. Well, you know, this recent uh, mini crash, 10% down in the markets, was a combination of the Ebola news and uh, uh, Germany's uh, economic minister standing up to Mario Draghi and, at the ECB in Europe and saying no more QE, you know, this is crazy. So the markets are not gonna like this. I think they care more about uh, no more QE in Germany, but if Ebola gets to any significant size, everybody knows this is exponential if it happens. And we've seen epidemics like this before. There was a great one in the early 20s during a downturn. So, uh, you know, at some point it could have a big impact and uh, particularly if it's not known or covered up and then suddenly uh, it's found out. So, so, I mean, I'm definitely not an expert on that, but we do see it. We actually, we just had a conference in Miami and had a speaker from the Elliott Wave organization that said their, their studies show that when stock markets peak and go down, as, as we're seeing like in the early 30s or the mid 70s or now, um, you usually do get things like epidemics and you get things, you know, weird weather like the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. So these things tend to happen together in cycles. That's right. You said this six months ago. You said epidemics and weird weather and people are like, well, yeah. how is that? Explain it. It's sun, it's sun cycles. Well, that, that's part of it too. About every 10 years, our solar radiation peaks and then goes down um, for five to six years. And in those down cycles, you're, you're more likely to see any, any type of thing from from uh, worsening weather, less rainfall, less sunshine, uh, possibly epidemics, and all 88, I went back 190 years, 88% of substantial financial crises, crashes, um, occur, and, and major recessions occurred in this down solar spot cycle. So this is a very tangible cycle that does have a tangible effect on the economy, We've just seen the most extended sunspot cycle in history, at least back to the 1700s, the last one. And now this cycle points down from 2014 into late 2019, early 2020. So this is saying we're going to have a financial crisis. If we're going to have anything major go wrong in the world. It's going to happen in the next five years. You've got an article up on your site right now, harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones. It says, Dow 6000, are you prepared? Again, you were on with us about six months ago and predicted the stock market would start going down. Uh, it has done that. What is your latest uh, analysis? Always been fixes and problems. And uh, that's what turns you into a third world nation. Now they're scapegoating the free market for this crony system they built. Where they buy out the public for some chicken feed welfare and then uh, you know, they have all this corporate welfare. And then they're always out trying to extinguish any real free market corporations or companies or individuals as if the very idea of free market threatens their rule and hegemony. They want to kill the golden goose. That's my view on it. Uh, Harry Dent, best-selling author, researcher, former top analyst and um, 
well, you guys have a lot of their operations uh, with Bain Capital, joins us about 15, 20 minutes the next hour. Then I'm going to go to medical doctors and others calling in with their take on Ebola and the bombshell news we broke in the last hour that there are people that clearly have Ebola in hospitals and the feds are whisking them away. Uh, this, is, this is just wild. And I've talked personally, not just to this medical doctor on record on air, but another one I know in a major city in Texas that said it is going on and is very freaked out. Uh, Mr. Dent, uh, getting back into what we're seeing on a depressionary level with all this inflationary uh, garbage paper on top of it, why there's that paradox, and then your take on my view that they're scapegoating capitalism for the rack and ruin that the departure from capitalism is causing. Well, yeah, Alex, I, free market capitalism always goes to extremes, and, and but it rebalances itself, just like the body. The body gets out of balance. It knows how to rebalance itself, especially if you eat the right foods and, and feed it right and stuff. The government started this. It started with Greenspan after the 87 crash. He said, oh, my gosh, we can't have a crash like this. So he pushes interest rates down. And then, you know, the SNL crisis again, and then long-term capital management, a big hedge fund fails. They've been, they've been pushing down interest rates, short-term and long-term, manipulating the economy. They don't trust the free market capitalist system. And if you don't let it work, you don't get the innovation. The innovation comes from the extremes of boom and bust, inflation and deflation. We need those dynamic options. Opposite. They're trying to turn this darn thing into a machine. It's not a machine. It's an organic process, just like our body. So they are killing the golden goose. We just had David Stockman at our major conference. He said the same thing. He called it the corruption of capitalism in America. So that's what they're doing. And they're blaming the free markets when things go wrong. They've been rigging this since 1987. With the president's committee on open markets, the plunge protection team and many other systems this is a rigged game my issue with it being rigged is not that it just kills innovation it allows select groups to capitalize on it at the expense of other real entrepreneurs and risk takers no that's right there's no question about it uh, and, and and by the fed keeping this bubble going even when it burst in 2008 all they're doing is favoring all those special interests on wall street i mean i want to see some major financial institutions and investment funds go down because they deserve to i want to see banks go down that made horrible loans in the free market system the way we learn and grow is is with there's consequences when you do something wrong that's how you learn and people don't realize even in human life not just in our economy we learn and and grow and evolve the most when we learn from our mistakes, not just when we're unsuccessful. We learn during crises. Exactly. The greatest innovations, the greatest leaders have always, and I mean always, come through crises like the 1930s and World War II or like the 1970s inflation era. Harry Dent is our guest right now. HarryDent.com forward slash Alex Jones to find the free chapter of his book on the China crisis. I want to talk about that. Chapter 10, the China disaster ahead. A uh, huge ticking time bomb, and uh, we'll break down how that affects us here. And then your calls are coming up on the Ebola situation. Stay with us, third hour. This is GCN, the Genesis Communications Radio Network. From the water, uh, listing the hospital where he was in residency before he uh, was fully a doctor where he talked to the doctors and nurses and people are coming in bleeding out and they're saying it's Ebola and they're whisking them away and saying shut up about it. I mean, it's just huge news. And telling them say that it's uh, you know something else that doesn't even have those symptoms. So that's coming up. So thank you, Phil, who's a physician and others for holding. I want to hear from you, Jeff, who's a firefighter, Ben, environmental health worker. Um, our guest right now is Mr. Dent. Uh, let's get into the, ch the free chapter you've got up for all the listeners. I appreciate you doing that at harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones. Uh, China, Chapter 10, the China disaster ahead. Yeah, Alex, this was, did not make it in time for the U.S. version of the demographic clip, but it did make it in my Asian book. So I want to make sure people can get this chapter so you can get it free at harrydent.com slash unpublished or by going to slash Alex Jones. The, this is the biggest story uh, of our time. China has become the second largest country. It's been the fastest growing country. People don't understand how much that economy is manipulated, top down, centrally planned, more than any economy ever in history. They have moved 
15% of their population, 220 million people in the last 15 years, the biggest push of migration, urban migration in all of history. Hey, it's natural to do that up to a certain point. This is massive. It's overdone. They've moved these people to cities with no skills. They have them build more apartments and infrastructures and industrial plants for nobody. China right now, and it's not just me, the top economists that study this are saying the same thing. A few of, them, of the few that are willing to admit it. They have 30 to 50 percent more industrial capacity than they need, infrastructures, bridges, railroads, roads to nowhere that make any other place look like nothing. 27 percent of their urban homes are vacant. They have built enough infrastructure and housing and offices and all this stuff for the next 12 to 15 years, even at the highest migration rates in history, which no way is going to continue. The China bubble is going to burst. These 220 million unskilled people will, are not even legal citizens in their own in the cities they're in, only in their rural areas. I think not only is this migration going to stop and this overbuilding is going to collapse on itself, but a lot of these rural people, rural people, have to move back to rural areas if they're left and haven't paved over them already with empty condos. But China is the largest, most obvious bubble in all of modern history. And everybody thinks China's just fine, 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 and loves the fact that their government drives their economy and thinks the government won't let it fail. I was in Dubai in 2006 and 2007 speaking at two major conferences just before that bubble burst. I said this bubble's going to burst, the greatest overbuilding in the world before China. They said, no, the government won't let it. Then I said, oh, you're really in trouble. 2008, it burst. China is going to burst. It's already starting to burst. It will be. It will reverberate around the world more than the subprime crisis and the banking crisis in the U.S. back in 2008. You got to get this chapter. I go to it in depth. Uh, this is the biggest thing that's going to happen. The other thing, Alex, just to bring it up while I'm at it, Germany. In the late 80s, 88, 89, I said Japan's going to fall off a cliff and collapse in the 90s, while the U.S. and Europe have the strongest demographic baby boom spending trend in history. That's exactly what happened. Germany has a worse demographic slowdown from 2014 to 2022 than Japan had in the 90s, and, and, and worse than any country in Europe, and many follow it. Germany is going to lead Europe down. And like, you, like we mentioned earlier, Germany is the only country smart enough to say that endless money printing is not the way to deal with this crisis. Debt restructuring. The reality is they're smart enough on that, but guess what? They're supposed to hold Europe together. They are going to keep falling apart. You think they're hesitant to QE or hesitant to bail out southern European countries now. Wait until their economy keeps failing. And in the last few quarters, Germany has done nothing but disappoint. That's right. Final segment with our guest, harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones to find the free chapter or get the book and then your phone call. Stay with us. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Here's some of the headlines. FBI and DHS issue bulletin warning of IS attacks on police in U.S. I've been saying for four years that Al-Qaeda forces funded by the West, getting Stinger missiles from the West to attack Assad and Libya and everybody else, would end up coming over here. Now it's happening. Look what happened in Canada yesterday. We've got an investigative journalist joining us at the bottom of the hour, Dan Dix, from Ottawa to break that down. Uh, also, Ebola inevitable from U.S. southern border is basically what Southcom is now saying, but it's wide open. George Soros calls for war. With Russia, a Kurt Nimmo story. Uh, no refusal blood draw checkpoint planned for Ohio. Protesters who plan to smash police brutality. Pumpkins arrested for littering and assault. Well, they were throwing the pumpkins across police lines in the direction of police. I mean, it's just it's just asking for us to. We got Ebola in the country, folks. We need to. Ferguson stuff needs to stop. Uh, Australian government f funds a new play called Kill Climate Deniers. Weather Channel co-founder, effort to prove global warming is man-made, has failed. Calibration error ch changes GOP votes to Democrats in Illinois County. Fox News, yeah, I'm sure that's what's really going on. That's some of the news up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Democrats are racing away from Obama right now, and he's being booed, and folks are walking off at the few fundraisers he comes to. The New York Times said yesterday, of course, that uh, they are, quote, in a uh, emergency uh, situation, have hit the panic button uh, and saying the president is not relevant. Uh, he's gone in two years. Uh, they're now race baiting heavily. DrudgeReport.com 
uh, has uh, articles and video of that unfolding from the Daily Caller. Uh, going back to Harry Dent, uh, uh, economist, uh, researcher, best-selling author, harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones. You can get his new book uh, there on the site, the, de the Demographic Cliff, that I absolutely agree with. Uh, in the time we've got left, what is your prognosis on Germany finishing up? What do you make of what's happening in the Ukraine, short term, long term? And then shifting back to the elections and what's happening here, uh, what your view on Obama and what he might pull uh, you know, as a wild card in the economy? Well, you know, yeah, the first thing uh, with, with Russia and Ukraine, we have a geopolitical cycle that I developed in late 2005 and early 2006 to add to my demographic cycles. because I realize it has a huge impact on stock valuations. And this shifts about every 18 years, 1983 to 2000, nothing went wrong in the world. We had one quick war with Saddam Hussein, we attacked him, backed out, no big deal. 2001 Ford, we know what happened. 9-11 and then, then after, you know, the, the Rocky War that was serious, occupation, Afghan War that, that really failed, Middle East, one Arab Spring and revolt after the next, uh, you know, Israel and Hamas uh, and the Gaza Strip. And now we have something more serious, Russia. Um, moving into Ukraine. Obviously, they, they want to restore the Soviet Union. They are one of the worst demographic countries ahead, a declining power, but they still have the only real offensive force in the world outside the United States. So this is a mini World War III possible. This geopolitical cycle points down from 2001 into at least late 2019, early 2020, which means we got five more years of this getting worse. So, so and by the way, uh, it's just about over. It's not. I mean, just to back up what you're saying, look at the Ministry of Defense report from 2007, the London Guardian reported on, uh, revolution, flash mobs, and brain chips, a grim vision of the future. And then you can actually read the report from the Ministry of Defense, uh, future strategic context planning. They predict basically 2015, 2016 through 2022 or so, global meltdown, just absolute insane terrorism, wars, uh, you name it. The Pentagon then declassified last year a report from the same year saying what you're saying, saying what I'm saying. It's not like we're being pessimists. We're saying folks need to be ready for this in these cycles. But the elites know this. George Soros knows this. The, the CIA people I know, Pentagon people high level all know this. Billionaires I know know this. Uh, all the real analysts know this. So you've got separate real analysts like you who are out there talking to real investors, institutional investors, uh, retail investors that are smart enough to research. Then you've got the CNBC crowd that's kind of got its own brand of hype with Jim Cramer up there. But even some truth comes out on those shows now about how we have a crony centralized system. Uh, I mean, how can you be so accurate? And we know what's going on. The Pentagon knows what's going on, but we're not really hearing this message uh, a lot of other places. It's just crazy. What do you expect to come out of this? Well, well again, now it's only going to get worse at a time when demographic trends get worse, innovation slowing down after everybody's been on the internet, and this sunspot cycle pointing out. All four of our cycles are down at the same time from late 2014 and early 2020. That's only happened twice, the mid-70s and early 30s, the worst two economic crises in the last century. So it's only going to get worse. And so, and, and these cycles are very solid. Again, since 2001, geopolitics trends have just gotten worse. The stock market is acting like there's nothing wrong in the world. And that's why people say, oh, the market's not overvalued. It's way overvalued that's compared right. to demographic trends and geopolitical. So the stock market's going to have to get in reality for one thing. But you're going to have to look at your life and your business and say, it's not just the stock market and economy going down. The world's going to get much more uncertain and, and, and more dangerous. Well, my gut tells me China's unprecedented manipulation, U.S. manipulation, EU manipulation, all this manipulation will only make it worse when these bubbles finally implode and they can't pump them up again uh, anymore. Uh, the book, The Demographic Cliff, is available uh, in bookstores everywhere or at uh, harrydent.com forward slash Alex Jones. You can uh, find right there a free chapter that he didn't end up getting in the book on the China disaster ahead. Thank you so much for the time, sir. Thank you, Alex. Always interesting. And I tell you, I, I'm not being pessimistic. People say, oh, don't be pessimistic. You got to live in the real world. I'm being very positive here. Like the police know that murders and robberies and rapes more than double on a full moon. You can give whatever reason you think that is. They know that in major cities.
It's also bad in the countryside. 